Steve McQueen in the background there. Would he be Hans is Hans Anderson's ideal model to, to see them still utilizing and add a picture of him in, in uh, racing overalls from I believe it's nice to see there in a movie, not even in real life. You know? <laughs> yeah, well, it, it 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 it's just uh, it's just testament to the strength of, 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 of his of his brand. He's uh, he's one of my heroes. It's, Probably appreciate with having a picture of him. Good evening and welcome to another tea room. Tonight we have a special guest, and it's from a small brand in Northern Ireland, which are absolutely fabulous quality. Uh, the brand is called Enixon. And in a moment, we're going to bring hands in. But first of all, I'd just like to introduce uh, the wonderful panel we have. It's normal, which is Palm. Hello, Palm. How are you doing, John? How are you doing, everyone? And Andy. Hi, Andy. Hey, hey, mate. Good afternoon. Or good evening, everyone, depending good where evening. you are in the world. Okay, so without, time, further, yeah. without further ado, I'll ask Palm to bring our guest into the room, please. Excellent. There he is. Yes, good evening, hey. Hans. How are you doing? <laughs> So, um, we're going to start off with doing a quick wrist check. So, I am wearing my silver-faced um, Enixon Deco, which is absolutely oh, popping there. Nice. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. lovely popping dial there. Yeah, very happy with Beautiful. that. Beautiful. <laughs> lovely watch. And our guest, actually, and uh, Hans, what have you got on the wrist? Well... <sighs> You'd not be surprised to know that um, we're wearing one of um, our watches, which is um, the chronograph. Uh, it's a watch called Drive, which is okay. Uh, okay. Sort of our our take on um, oh, ooh, what nice. a chronograph should should look like. Ooh, that's nice. Hand the dial, yeah, excellent, yeah. very nice. Andy, what have you got on? Well, well I also is. have, uh, yeah, so I have the Deco 36 as well. And with, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Pink, yeah. pink dial, Beautiful. yeah, that pops. Yeah, don't be afraid to, to wear pink, it's a cool colour. Don't be you afraid go. to wear any colour, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. If like, yeah, if you like the watch, buy it and wear um, it. Okay. I'm doing something different, but similar. So I'm also wearing an Enixon, but I'm wearing the Enixon Ooh. Fly bronze watch with the blue dial and the Tropics, beautiful Tropic strap. Nice. This also came with a nice leather strap as well, which um, I haven't put on because I love yeah, this but... so much. <laughs> any or, any, any passionation on that so far? Uh, uh, it's slight. It it's been a couple of months, but uh, slight. A very slight, though. But, but and uh, actually, uh, Enixon kindly gave a, a Burgeon kind of buffing to, uh, tool as well ah, to excellent. help with the patination, which I thought was a really nice touch. Yeah. So yeah, that's I, I really do like this. It's so so nice. A bit dangerous in London. Don't think people want, people might think this is rose gold. So even though it's bronze, yeah. <laughs> you have to be yeah. careful. <laughs> yeah, in London, mate, you have to be careful. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's brilliant. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm going to make Hans full screen, being our guest, you know, and he's in our home, and his home is our home. So here we go. Okay, and... so uh, Hans, first, first of all, um, Enoxon, could you give us like a just a brief, his, not a brief, as long as you'd like to tell us a history about your the brand and what inspired you to to do it and how you're finding it. Well, the. The company is not that old. Uh, it's basically uh, it's um, it's a result of uh, a lifelong dream I had about entering the watch industry at some point in my life, and um, we launched the brand in uh, the beginning of 2018, and uh, that was basically born out of an idea of I've been a watch collector. Uh, throughout my life and I always liked the, the way you get treated when you buy really nice watches some 
some dealers are really really kind to people and i've 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 had uh, the pleasure on a couple of occasions and that that experience has always stayed with me and i thought how cool would it be if uh, we could we could offer something similar but when people were buying a watch at a, at a, at a, at a much more uh, realistic price point compared to rolex because it goes without saying that you're usually treated quite well when you buy one of those but I wanted to do a brand where we um, where we gave a lot of priority to, to, to that side of the, the thing because one thing is the watch, another thing is the customer service experience, and yeah. another thing again is the kind of the kind of universe that you built uh, up as a brand. We we were sort of past the point where we didn't just believe that you could make a nice watch shoot some good pictures and then stick it all on Instagram and Bob would be your uncle and you would just sit there and count the money because that might have been true a while ago but it's certainly not true anymore and it wasn't even true when we began this this journey so I knew from the outset that it would take something more than just a nice watch to get noticed because the world is full of nice watches quite frankly yeah so we began on on on, on that note and uh, we introduced a watch, which was, I, I picked the diver's watch as a starting point, but that was that was just a pragmatic choice. And it was also a, a result of my personal preference. I, I like diver's watches a lot. And I thought, okay, let's open with that. Let's open with a form factor that is the most popular in, in, in the watch industry. So uh, that's where it began. We made a very small run of the first watch and we didn't really know what would happen so we launched the brand we launched the website and we we debated back and forth what what we would call the company and somebody said well you're danish and your name sounds cool and it works really well in in an online universe and there was sort of an honesty in calling uh, the company not an invented name but an actual name of the founder yeah. and um, that's how it came to be that uh, we, we call ourselves uh, my surname and it has worked well so far but the success was there relatively quickly because it was it was a good watch at a reasonable price and we grew the range from there and we've since developed that watch into uh, there was a second generation and now a third generation which i hope to talk a bit about tonight and oh, yes, uh, definitely that's that's how we got started and one of the things we wanted to do was that we were an online company and we're trying to do various events that sort of puts us in front of a, of a live audience, real people and not just online. But even when it is an online interaction uh, where a customer from somewhere in the world buys one of our products, we seek to have a really personal uh, communication throughout. So if, if there's any questions about the order that we receive, we would call the customer regardless where on the planet he would be. If somebody bought a watch with, um, with a bracelet, we would have it as a service that we would uh, call the customer and say, thanks very much. Uh, we would like to adjust the bracelet for you so that the watch fits right out of the, out of the box when you receive it. And you do, you do, sense the surprise on the phone call when you when you phone a guy in Sydney who just bought a watch from a company in Belfast um, with, with with the purpose of, of obtaining his his wrist size and we yeah. we're doing things like that I like to write as a, 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 a short note with with every order uh, thanking people for for, for, for the business um, and um, th those are those are simple things sing, simple uh, gestures and simple uh, tokens of uh, respect and appreciation and, and, and we do that not because it's 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 cunning but because that's that's the ethos of what we do that's how I am as a person I hope and that's that's been a, a priority all along okay that was actually a question I was going to ask you what is the actual I mean it's a, it's a great story that it seems very you seem very passionate about doing what you're doing and it seemed like you're going in the right direction what is your ethos what's the ethos that drives enox and watches well we i believe as a collector and people 
collect watches uh, on on well, number of levels, not 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 just the the expensive watches, but uh, the beauty the beautiful thing about uh, the watches as such is that everybody can participate regardless of budget, pretty much. And as a collector, I believe that uh, you need to to have five watches in your life to sort of be considered a collector and. Apart from the diver's watch that I mentioned before, I believe you need an aviator and a, you, you need a chronograph like the one I'm, I'm currently wearing. Then you need yeah. a really solid everyday watch that does everything uh, well. And then you need sort of a dress watch, something you could wear with, with a, at a black tie event or something formal, something you wear at your wedding or whatever whatever special occasion there is. And with, with, with those five uh, types of watches, you, you you're quite prepared for pretty much any situation and everything we do falls into one of those five categories and that's what 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 drives us so we we want to offer something really nice in all those five categories and there's still a long way to go we are fairly decent on the, on 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 the divers watches at, at this stage and aviation there's 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 more to do on the chronograph there's a lot more to do we got some interesting things in the pipeline for, for, for the other categories as well. The decos that uh, you're all wearing was sort of a bit to have a watch, which it's a little bit dressy, but it's but worn on worn on a, an ASO strap or on a rubber strap, it, it yeah, does really well. And and another yeah. another part of it is that every watch we do, whether it's a dressy watch or it's a watch which should be worn by saturation divers, uh, it needs to meet a certain criteria. We want, we want proper water resistance. We want uh, sapphire crystal, and we want sort of a, a, a relatively high level of basic uh, features, uh, because these are at the end of the day they're tool watches, and they they need they need to be ready for for a hard life and uh, or whatever you throw at them. That's 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 part of the ethos as well. Okay, so the quality has to be yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. So, yeah, a quick, a quick question from my side would be: uh, one thing I've noticed with your brand is the the focus on the customer. So, you know, what's your general like ethos around the around the customer's journey as well? Because, like, the attention to detail I notice, like with the handwritten note, I think is is brilliant. But I know um, you're very focused on. You know how their watch collecting journey grows as well with yours of brand, right? Well, it's there's there's several stages in this. There's there's the customer gets in touch about a, a, a watch that he's interested in, and the whole the whole pre-sale phase uh, is as important as as as, as anything else. And we we sort of we have this attitude here that regardless of what the question is the answer is always yes uh, within reason of course but we, we we try to accommodate and we understand that this is not just okay here's a here's a watch on a website here's the buy button uh, get your credit card out and and buy the watch and um, be happy ever after we're, we're quite happy to have that interaction we are, we're sort of seeking proactively the dialogue with the customer uh, by the by the way we interact it's not like Oh Jesus! I hope I never hear from him again. That, that's that, that's yeah. that's not how we do this. We we see this as the beginning of a partnership, and that partnership begins the first time you send an email or a message on Instagram or whatever platform you communicate with us on. And we spend a lot of time on on that kind of communication because I feel it's important as uh, as, as as a brand that. Uh, that takes the product seriously and takes the customer seriously. That is not just okay. He's not buying today. I can't really spare him any time. That's 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 mm. that's never the attitude. We we want that interaction, and that's 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 what 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 we base this on. Yeah. So there's not there's clear. there's a lot. If there's if there's an issue, because things fail and the failure rate is low. But when when something goes wrong, we want to be known as the guys who fix it immediately if something goes wrong and that also means that okay something's wrong here and the the watch was fine when when we did our qc here so something must have happened but it's we, we always give the customer the benefit of the doubt 
because that it, it it doesn't pay to uh to to, to be cheap or try to lowball people when uh when yeah. you you could there's a lot of other people doing that and i don't want to join that club so we're different on that one yeah no 100 no that's a great message i think uh, i think it's good for our viewers to know that as well um hans you said about quality control so is every single watch that you dispatch is that tested by you know what, what you, do you put it on the timer grapper or what yeah the, if, if it's come? an automatic we, we we would do that but we've um the fly watches and uh the divers watches are now house assembled in belfast so we, we basically we we make things in component form we built the watches to order so it's that changes the whole narrative in terms of the quality control because the components are being picked and the watch is being assembled and there's there's there's, there's quite a rigorous process that that the watch goes through uh, because it it also means that we're not just getting 100 watches in and pick one and put put a strap on it and off it goes and that's made in Belfast. That's not made in Belfast. That's just somebody in, in a shed put, putting a strap on a, on a watch. That's not manufacturing. We do this uh, the hard way by basically we source the movements, we, we source the cases, we, saw, we source the hands, the case backs, the dials, the straps, everything that, that, that becomes the watch. And that, that's what we do. And a part of the experience is on those watches it's not something we've launched properly now because we haven't talked much about it but we're starting to do that shortly that is you could basically you you could turn up here you could watch your watch being manufactured or you could you could get a video link but you could see it happening if you're that way inclined or we could do you a, a quick time lapse of your actual watch being made and that also introduces more choice for the customer because the aviators uh watch the bronze watch you're wearing um that is available with a number of different dials there's a different different hand combinations color combinations of the second hand that that gives you a bit of choice not insane amounts of choice because it means that regardless how you configure it it's a watch that we can stand over uh aesthetically because there's there's also i'm aware of brands that are that are allowing customization where it sort of becomes almost morbid when you see when, when when you see the combinations that the customer can make we don't we, we we we're not gonna let you let yourself down but we 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 pick some 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 combinations that we believe are good but that is a that is a thing that we see a lot of interest in people people want an involvement they want a, a sort of a, a mental share in the, in in the process the watch looks like this because the choices the customers made and that's that's something we're going to focus on intensely from now on yeah okay all, all um, that is basically putting a camera on a on on the process that's the, the process that we're already doing so it's uh it's relatively easy for us to do there's a lot you, you have a lot you provide in terms of personal service there um so i've got a question that um in terms of Watch make. I mean, you're covering quite. Like you say, you've got five. You want you cover five areas, and basically, I think you've covered every area with the five you mentioned. Um, who do you look up to most in terms of watchmaking? Maybe not in for all five, but just generally, personally, for yourself. And then uh, the second part of my question would be: Who would you want to be most like? You know, I mean, at the at the moment who do you see yourself most like and and who is your inspiration for watch inspiration for the brand that you want to ultimately have that's uh that's that's a fine question i um i've, I've studied a, a lot of the brands and, and 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 their respective journeys but it's it's hard not to like what rolex did in 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 the early years my namesake and uh, Wilsdorf yep, and, and his, his approach to business, because it was it was it was all about trying to 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 make something that hadn't been done before, and it was all about uh, fabulous customer service, and that you you, all, you probably know all the stories that uh, that exist yep. from from how Rolex conducted itself uh, through, through uh, pass, pass, passages of, of, of history, but um, that's impressive. I don't quite like the way they've uh, 
they've they've they they become what or what they become now. It's 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 a bit it's a bit too bling and it's it's too expensive. But fortunately, uh, uh, the poor cousin, as some people call it, uh, Tudor is 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 picking up where where I feel that um, that, that that Rolex left where you could see there's 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 genuine value. And I actually think some of the, some of the best value watches you could buy, all things considered, at the moment. Are from Tudor, and I like this yeah, sort of agree with that. approach. Yeah. Uh, the no nonsense, the the, the 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 less is more kind of thinking, and that was what what made Rolex so special uh, in the past. But they still have a fabulous legacy, and it's a bit like when 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 you when when you look at, at that, you you don't just buy a watch, you buy a, a brand that has been worn by the people. Who made things happen the last 75 years? It's been worn by the best sports stars, the politicians, actors, explorers, the like. So you're standing on on on, on the shoulders of yep. absolute greatness, undisputed Giants. greatness. Yeah, yeah. And there's 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 nothing you can you you can do as a competitor to better that. And I think it's they they get a lot of they they they. they they get a lot of, uh, of abuse in certain watch forms, I noticed. But at the end of the day, they, they're they the biggest brand for us. <laughs> not the best yeah. watch necessarily, but that's not the point here. The point is the, the way it makes you feel, the sense of achievement when, 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 when you buy your first Rolex. I remember when I bought my first one and it was just... It was an experience that will stay with me forever. And maybe it's an experience that, ex that, that uh, inspired this little project which is this watch company okay thank you Brilliant. thank you for that wow. excellent wow yeah. i see steve mcqueen in the background there would he be the hans's hans anakson's ideal model for the anakson range had you been around in the 60s yeah it's 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 remarkable with him isn't it because uh he's obviously attack poster boy and just to, to 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 see them still utilizing and add a picture of him in in uh racing overalls from i believe it's in nice movie. Yeah, there, there. in a movie not even in real life yeah, <laughs> yeah no, it, it 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 it's just uh it's just testament to the strength of, 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 of his of his brand he's uh he's one of my heroes as as, as you can probably appreciate with having a picture of him. I'm in I'm sitting in our showroom right now. So yeah they don't call him so cool for nothing. Yeah. He is he's <laughs> one of the best men to ever walk this earth in my opinion. But um yeah. wow if he was available we would uh, we'd work with him. <laughs> Snap him up <laughs> yeah straight away yeah. Andy sorry go on no, no. I was just going to say, um, do you have any of the pieces with you, maybe, to to walk us through some of the collections? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, I mentioned before that uh, our first watch, uh, which was the Deep Dive, which 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 we launched uh, back in 2018, has um, has recently been updated, um, and it exists in um, in in three different cases. So there's um, there's there's a, there's a stainless steel version here um okay. of it. and there's uh um, the deep dive is that right that's, that's the deep dive yeah and the steel there's there's, okay, a, there's, bron bron there's a bronze oh, edition nice. with this a solid bronze case and then there's um there's a black edition of it where where, where the case is uh, oh, is black i like that one that's Ooh. really nice yeah it's cool yeah. Yeah. Then there is we we do a little bit of work with various uh, uh, military, shall we say, uh, forces customers. This uh, watch I'm going to show you now is a variation uh, of 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 the black. I don't know if you can see it uh, clearly. Yeah, okay. We've got can, a twenty-four yeah. hour yeah. dial, and it's it's basically the deep dive case with its. Uh, with its slightly deep. Right. This. Around. That's, yeah there you go that's, that's yeah this, this was uh this was uh made for for swedish task force uh it's 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 uh it's a department of the police they're the boys that uh, that they call when everything else fails so that is that is anti-terrorism and stuff like that and uh this watch was made for them 
And part of the agreement was that there was we could make a surplus of this and and sell to other customers. So this this watch actually sees real world action. So that's which, the very model. It's not a, a variation of the one you gave to them. This is no, the this is the very same watch. The only difference they would have they have wow. that their case backs have have a particular engraving which we're making for them. So it depends on the rank. So when 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 we built them, they, they it specified uh, which of the three case backs. Uh, the officer who gets the watch uh, is entitled to wear. <laughs> uh, so no, so okay. we, we, we make them uh, accordingly. Yes. What's the that, price point on these ones? Hunt? Sorry. The new yeah. version here, which is, um, they're all, they're all uh, Swiss movement based now. So uh, this watch carries the STP 111 uh, Swiss movement, which we have further calibrated in-house. So the price point is around 500 pounds for this watch. That's a thousand mm. meter water resistance, wow. obvious sapphire crystal, a bit of ceramic bezel. It's easier to see on the, on, on the, on the bronze version here. You got, you got uh, the helium escape valve on the side. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, I, I couldn't think of anything else to add. So we also added uh, drilled locks, something we didn't have before. Because okay. That, yeah. That, yeah. Because the watch comes with a little tool, uh, which allows you to uh, you basically insert the tool in the side of, uh, of, uh, of of the locks, and that releases uh, the strap. Uh, yeah. Very yeah. Brilliant. Was that for a vintage look or to, for ease of removal or both? Both. Because okay. I think it looks good, and it's it's, yeah, it it's, it's yeah. there's a there's, there's a practical reason, there's a functional reason for it as well. Yes. Yeah. It's just so which easy. which Swedish depart? Who is it? So which is it? The Swedish. Um, well, who did you say it is who, who actually has those then? Which, which, um, the issued one? Did you say the Swedish Army the or police task the, force? Police, police, police task yeah. force, right? Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's kind of like a flying a, squad, I guess. Yeah, a bit like yeah. flying squad. I would imagine. Right, because <laughs> that's my st military stuff is my shit. That's what I kind of <laughs> buy stuff, stuff that's kind of like CWC, SPS stuff, and issued stuff is the kind of stuff that I like. Yeah. So I'm always interested in what gets issued to who and you know whether it's properly issued because there's a there's a lot of myth whether you get some companies for instance who claim that they're they're issued and then you find out that it's just available to buy at a discount to people when they show their identity so it's good to have a watch like yours is actually issued and they actually use it properly you know what i mean that's Indeed. pretty good yeah, yeah it's really excellent. cool Wow, it's a it's a very popular watch, um, even without that story there. But it's, um, it's I like that. Yeah, is it uh, yes. stainless steel with HL? Uh, what's the coating on it? It's PVD, but it's oh, PVD. It's, okay. we, yeah. We've uh, we the quality level is ridiculous. You can take this yeah. case to Helen back, and we obviously get them in for servicing occasionally. And we got over the the course of the last couple of years we probably sold seven eight hundred pvd coated watches and they never fail it's not like it's it's peeling i've seen i've seen really cheap and nasty pvd on watches where it looks like somebody painted it in uh, in preschool but this this is this 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 can take abuse serious amounts of abuse Wow, it looks that looks really the black one. They the, they all look very nice. The the black you can one have you can have sort of a, the conventional version of it as well, which is which has a, a sort of more traditional uh, divers uh, watch dial layout. Okay. And obviously the numbers on this, it. Uh, yeah. now the crown's out and it's it's out of position just to freeze it at ten past ten, but uh, it's the location of the crown is really good and it. This is a 44 mil watch, which is quite beefy. We managed to make it a little bit thinner in this in this latest iteration of it. But because the crown is down there, and usually most most people wear a watch on their, their left hand, and <laughs> by the crown down at at, at the four o'clock position, it doesn't eat in to, to, to your hand in the same way as 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 a crown at three o'clock position. Plus, it's well shielded down there, uh, so you don't need crown guards and all that because. It, it doesn't really catch anything. You see sure. now, now, now the crown screwed in and it's quite discreet down there. So there are several advantages of, of, of doing it 
that way. Mm -hmm. so that would be sort of our signature watch. Uh, Very nice. Very nice, yeah. Another another watch I, I could talk about because that has a that has a movement share with the deep dive. Um, the new version of, uh, of, of of the bronze watch, and mm. that's that's a thirty nine mil uh, case, again in solid bronze, with two and a meter water resistance, obviously sapphire crystal as well, and that is um, that is again most aviators watches, they get five ATM, some some sometimes ten if you're lucky, but I, I've seen IWC watches with, with with three ATM, and you could say, is it really relevant? Um, because if you're if you're a pilot, and you find yourself in the water, <laughs> it, exactly, it, it yeah. <laughs> doesn't really matter what the, what the water resistance level is, because there's a bigger problem than than, than, yeah. than if you're, a pilot <laughs> yeah, so you're you're getting water in your watch. I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, but, but this is. This is this is a sort of a vintage look, uh, almost World War Two uh, derived design. Yeah, and it's not often we, we we got a few customers that we know to be pilots that are wearing them as a pilot's watch, but it, it's yeah. it's more sort of a, a, a watch category this day and age. And just because it looks like a pilot's watch and it's made to those specifications, it should still be versatile as a tool watch. So um, if you find yourself on the beach or wherever, you should be able to to use this watch without any fear of uh, of, uh, of of water intrusion into the case. So that meets the same criteria, and that is that is also one of the watches that we are building from scratch here. Um, that you, you can you can watch being being created from 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 component level. Yeah. Wow. wow awesome okay so you've gone for some colored dials as well on these right some uh orange and yeah that's the, blue. Yeah, that's the steel that's version blue. of it because we have we have um as as a bit to be um a, a brand that uh that acts a bit bigger than it is we have we have six uh brand ambassadors that uh some of them we worked with since since the beginning and we thought it would be nice to challenge each of them to uh, to pick a set of colors for the dial and the hands on uh, on a watch which is pretty uniform which is is the steel version of uh yeah. of uh, this watch here so there's there's a stainless steel case and then there is uh, for each ambassador there's there's, there's there's a set of colors um that came to be uh, based on feedback okay Bernard, if you what, what do you want this to to look like? And somebody, somebody, some, one of them chose quite a, a, a vibrant um, look, and others are more sort of really, really discreet, really cool and monochrome. But it was the, the story here is that it's again, it's 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 a good watch with the ambassador's personal choice in in in, in, in colors, basically. Yeah, so it's so not just something back. I've imagined. It's 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 colors that were picked by by by, by the ambassadors individually. The nice and they're nice combinations of the black and orange, orange, you know, black dial, orange um, uh, indices, and um, minute yeah. track, and so there's a lot a nice variation here. Um, how did you go about getting these ambassadors? I mean, these are sports famous Danish sportsmen. Is that right? Or there's there's six of them. Or... A quick run through. One of them is um, is uh, Paul Laurie, the golfer. From uh, he he won British Open 1999. He won he's won the Ryder Cup twice, mm -hmm. and he's still active. And uh, Paul got in touch. Uh, he was doing COVID. Uh, the phone rang one day, and I was we we, we kept going with 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 the skeleton staff uh because you weren't supposed to do anything but then then the phone rang and it was him i thought oh. okay bloody bloody hell that's paul Lord. <laughs> he, he was part of the brand um and he had um he had a desire to be uh to be working with it and uh, he also had an idea which we are looking uh to turn into uh reality next year um which is as i said before he won he won british open 1999 and uh, he had this idea that it would be cool to take the steel from the club heads 
uh, of the irons okay. that he used to win mm. in 1999 and wow. turn it into a watch. Uh, well, certain components of the watch. Um, and we went to work on that and working with a Danish designer who's based in Switzerland, a young fella called Thomas Fonda. Uh, we've designed a watch, which is a chronograph watch, which will be a fully Swiss made project. So the case and everything else is, is, is going to be derived from, from Switzerland. It's going to have a Valshu 7750 movement. And okay. yeah. the pushers, the pushers on this chronograph uh, will be made of uh, the steel, which we will, we will, we will, we will get from, from, from melting the club heads from, from Paul's mm. club. There. So that's the project that we're working on, but it's also a bit of a vanity project and it will take us well, well out of our usual comfort zone in terms of pricing. But it's no. every, everybody in golf circles who's seen uh, the renderings of the watch are signing up to buy it so it's, 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 it's a some, golfer's some, watch yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's unique a little unique little niche there right yeah. the golfer's watch yeah in terms in terms of the others we got we got a swedish tennis player uh, his name is michael pernforce he's not known outside of tennis service but he was number 10 in the world and he's he played the french open final and he's 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 a oh. big name in tennis uh, and i knew him because i'm i play tennis at a a relatively high level myself and he's still active he if you've ever if you watch wimbledon you, you, you they've got these legends events where where some of the of the past greats play each other so it's more more for fun but but sort of for, for, for a bit of entertainment and he's part of that and he's basically made a life on tennis and he plays exhibitions he's um he's he travels the world and when I began this, I gave him a call and said, "I'm I'm I'm making a watch brand here. Do you wanna Do you wanna be involved in this?" And he said, "Yeah, I would love to." And the same with um, a French fashion model called Bernard Fouquet, who is uh, well, he's he's modeled for uh, any every watch brand you can uh, you can think of, and plus uh, Ralph Lauren, uh, Hilfiger. He's worked with everyone, oh, okay. Brooks Brothers. Well. He's 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 an institution in fashion and i thought okay that would be natural and he he has some he has some very interesting ideas on on, on, on watch design and um, how a watch becomes part of of the look of so so you say you, you you're dressing yourself for the day yeah the, the watch is very much uh, an integrated part of, of of his thinking when he's when he's dressing himself and he looks like a million then there's uh, then there's uh, the guy um who came up with the with the black and orange? His name is Jesper Carlson. He's 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 not really that known outside of Denmark, but he's uh, he's a man with a very interesting life because he's uh, he's a Porsche uh, track day instructor. He's a he's a racing driver of some some standard himself. Yeah. He's he's a Top Gear host, uh, the Danish Top Gear, and he's, okay. he's uh, he, he manages uh, the, the Danish Formula One driver Kevin Magnussen. So he's at every Formula One yeah. race. So that's, wow. that's that's an interesting life mm -hmm. uh, if you're into racing. <laughs> but he's he, he's he's one of them as well, and um, so is Jan Magnussen, who is the father of Kevin Magnussen, who's currently in Formula One. But Jan was in Formula One for McLaren and Stewart Racing, and he's won Le Mans four times. So he's, yeah, I know that name. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I used to go to Le Mans. Uh, he's he's um, mm -hmm. he's a dude. And then. Uh, last one is is, is is a danish tennis player who's also uh he's he's a, he's a eurosport tennis commentator so he's on eurosport all the time and he's um he's a coach uh tennis coach and he he coached uh, a chinese girl uh called lina to uh to french open uh victory in in back in 2011. he's he's, he's very he's very well known in Denmark and, and and a great guy for the brand so they're sort of they're sort of seasoned boys, all of them, but it fits with 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 our audience, the age of our audience, and um, yeah. it gives us relevant stories and fresh content. And these guys are, are genuinely behind the brand and backing it, so it's um, it's a good thing. Brilliant, yeah. Yeah, it's a good good thing to have, and like you say, dressing yourself. With, you could, if you had the whole range of these flies you could you know you don't have to worry about <laughs> yeah you saw the colors yeah. do you <laughs> <laughs> i noticed you've got a big bond 
Uh, you look like Bond fans, according to your website. Is uh, is that is that you as well? You a big James Bond fan? Yeah, that would uh, that would uh, that would be untrue to say that I'm that I'm not. Yeah, I, aren't we all to some? To, to some yeah, point? I just wonder. <laughs> yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. One hundred percent. Well, yeah, me and. I'm not Andy, but me and Pam are big, yeah, big, we're Bond, we're definitely we're big Bond huge fans. Bond fans. We're absolutely yeah. huge Bond fans. But we uh we we made um we have sort of a we have a diver's watch called Dive, which yes. is, uh it's 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 heavily inspired by uh by sort of a classic submariner. Uh, yeah, I've been all over it. I've been looking at that. That's what we've been looking at. Yeah, we, we, yeah. we, we sort of make made we, we we made a watch which sort of is a nod or a tribute to. Um, you know that moment in in the pre-credits of, of, of Goldfinger where he's just about to blow up that uh, that I think it's uh, it's a refinery or something heroin refinery yeah. or something like that. Yeah. And he's he's checking his time. He he takes out his lighter and then 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 he, he lights up uh, the dial of a of a submariner on a on some of a pre-nature strap kind of a, a nylon strap in in yeah. it's sort of a regiment colored. Uh, and it's even yeah. too, the, the strap's too narrow. But that was Ian Fleming's watch, and they, they had to have a NATO, yes. and he, he supplied it. And it gets yeah. people don't get it. Some people, because I think it, I think it's sixteen mil. Is it sixteen mil? Isn't it on a twenty mil? The, the, the thin one. I'm sure it's even. I, th I don't think it's even eighteen. I think it's sixteen. Oh, there's there's there's, there's uh, you you can you can see a very big part of the pin. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's just yeah. very thin, it's isn't classic. it? Yeah. It's it doesn't, classic. Doesn't, it yeah. doesn't look good, but that's not the point. The, the, it's the Bond. Point Only Bond can get away with that. Only Bond can get <laughs> yeah. away with yeah. Who cares <laughs> when you when style like that? So, yeah. Have you got any <laughs> more Bond ones you're looking at? Any more influences to any of the other Bond watches? Mm. Any, yeah. any ideas? I was going to ask that, that one. Yeah. There's, the, there's a blog on our website where I've basically taken the tour uh, through, yeah. through, uh, through the, var the, var the various generations of Bond Watch. Probably that, brilliant, yes, I did. Because it, like it, was, it, it was a bit random to begin with, I think, and then they got more streamlined when, when Roger Moore became Bond and uh, they did this deal with Seiko and he was wearing all these... Got Crazy all, watches. Uh, yeah, <laughs> quartz it's, crisis watches, yeah. right? The smart watch. <laughs> the yeah. With, but, but he was, and, and then sort of Omega basically used uh, the franchise to revive themselves, I think, because Omega was mm. had a had a long stint of uh, nothing pretty much from uh, from when 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 sort of the course crisis broke out, and I think they 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 were struggling immensely for for, for finding their place in 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 in, in the world of watches and. And there wasn't much happening, and then suddenly, boom! Uh, in the mid '90s, they they revived the Seamaster, and they they joined Bond. I think he took them to a better place. Um, yeah, much better place. That's, yeah. that's, that's very much part of it. I don't know if that's the only reason, but that that have been a strong influence uh, on their success, I'd say. That was Jean Claude Biver, wasn't it? He actually gave more money to the to Omega. I mean, to the Bond franchise, saying, "I want this. This is going to be worth a lot more in the long term." Incredible yeah, wise decision, I think. Yeah. So if you could make a watch for one of the bonds in history and you could name it like you have your brand ambassadors, which which bond would be your brand ambassador for Enix? Mm. <laughs> Great question. <laughs> That's difficult. Um because it would be easy to say Sean Connery and but I I'd say I I'm I'm probably leaning more towards um Daniel Craig because he's yes. Yes. Yeah, we thought. Yeah, be careful yeah. because yeah. without a doubt, he's the best Bond. I don't he care, is. but because you say Connery, but Daniel Craig, hundred percent to me is the best Bond. We, we, we will never know, but George Lazenby, if given if given more time and a couple of more films, mm. yes. But yes, he, he, he could have done it. Yeah, he was a very I cool guy. Yeah, he had the whole he's than, big than, as well. Than, yeah, he just people yeah. will have you believe. I, this yeah, one of my favorite brilliant. films. That one, actually, I like that one. Yeah, he, yeah. yeah his agent turned service. around and said, "Don't get involved with this bomb thing anymore. It's not going to go anywhere." That's why he didn't do it. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah, that that he, he, he went into yeah. tough porn yeah. instead. That's that was. That, oh really? That was go, go down as one of uh, <laughs> one of the worst career moves ever. In, <laughs> <definitely> <laughs> he wasn't shame, even an actor, yeah. was he? He was a model who just yeah, he was a model. Up he, and blagged he, the the audition. 
basically. <laughs> Brilliant. It's a great, it's a great yeah. bomb. It's a Trick great, the yeah. Broccoli, yeah. 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 Mm. I need to watch that again now, I think. <laughs> that one. <laughs> yeah. No, that's a that's a that's a fabulous film, but the the story is good, the plot sound, and uh, the location mm -hmm. is great, and Diane Rigg as the as the Bond girl is just unbeatable. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. Even Joanna Lumley's in it as well. This this is yeah, she's, she's, yeah. she's one you don't of the girls. Hear much about her being, yeah, you don't hear about her being a Bond girl, but she was in there. Yeah, she is. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a fabulous film. So, just the bespoke process you have. Could you just talk us through? Let's say I want. A watch and i'm going to go through your bespoke process what would i need to do to initiate that and then mm. go, yeah. go through the whole routine well that's gonna there's gonna be a significant upgrade of uh, the website where this is dealt with in a different fashion because it's almost like like a consultant's job the way the, the way you approach this because these watches are obviously going through the the process so when 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 when, when you order a deep dive we've done all that uh, unbeknownst to you, but um, it would be uh, if you, you register interest in, in, in something that's bespoke, where, where you make the choices, and then we will contact you, and it will be um, it will be, be done in dialogue, and uh, either by a, a web link or a, a, a personal visit here, uh, or whichever whichever way you, you you'd want it, and and the process then being documented. Um, so, so you're basically getting a keepsake. There's, there's pictures taken of the watch, and there's, there's, uh, there's, there's a film of, um, of the process being being recorded, which you then receive okay. as well as the watch. Okay. How long would that process okay. take? Well, if it's if it's straightforward with what what we have here, and there's no. We, we we're, we're basically able to 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 make pretty much uh within reason uh components for for the watch if there's let's say you fancy a particular dial color we we, we could accommodate that it's not necessarily going to make the watch cheaper on the contrary but we we could do that so it is subject to component av availability and put component production time but we could turn a, a bespoke watch around in in a couple of days. We like we like to run a proper, not not just a test on the machines, but uh, but but let it actually run for a while and make sure that everything's fine. So, the short answer is it takes a few days. Okay, it's still pretty quick, right? Yeah. Okay, that's, that's good. It's great. Yeah. And how much detail into the? I mean, what? How much can you change? From the original configuration is it like the dull color or i mean have you got a whole different you've got, host you've got of dials dial color, you've got the, hands, the color of the hands the style of the hands um uh case back design we're, we're we're in terms of the dial we're looking we're looking at a technology and it's too early right now <laughs> i shouldn't even talk mm. about it, but it, it's going to be mm. possible to pretty much make any color in and any graphics on on a dial that's not mm, okay. not quite yet but it, it, it will be possible and yeah not too okay i'm just going to close on saying that that's that would be of personal yeah. interest Brilliant. to me so i'll, I'll keep yeah. in touch with, with, with what's yeah. when that it was, that, it was what's going on yeah. we, we we work with a company that have patented the technology that allows you to uh, to do exactly that so it treats the dial as a canvas and whatever you want on that canvas can be lasered onto it, and that is that is, that is imagery. It's it's graphics, it's wordings, it's markers, it's it's anything you want. Wow. And wow. It's, it's 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 a remarkable technology, and they've sold it to Rolex already. That technology. Oh wow! Okay. Well, you're so, going in the right footsteps then. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Can, can you choose material as well or is it a specific material or would there be options to have like kind of different textured dials different materials what you use for the dial it's as well or is it more just technology is uh this, this is basically assuming uh, a blank uh, piece of mess uh, our dials okay. usually made of metal and i suppose you could do it to a textured dial but it's still mm -hmm. still early days okay that's no, super interesting, yeah. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. Thank you. Watch your space. I think, yeah. 
Yeah, watch this space. I'm like I say, we'll be watching very keenly on that one because I'm sure I'll be interested yeah. in seeing. Should be some getting one of those. Yeah, in, in in the new year. So, um, um, watch this space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> T and tickers dials. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You get a blue yeah. dial with white writing on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> T and tickers <laughs> edition. T and tickers with an and or something. Okay, so yeah. I think we can wrap up there. Thank you yes. very much, Hans. Thank you, Hans. Very kind of you really to join us. Yeah, absolute pleasure. So, um, well, I hope yeah. I was able to answer your questions and give you an idea. Of what, certainly. Uh, what we're doing oh, definitely. Nope. Brilliant. It's been, yeah. yeah, thank you so much. You've got so much going on. It, it's. Yeah, I don't think an hour was would have actually just. Yeah, I think we've done enough justice, but I think there's so much more yeah. we could have gone into. But yeah. a lot more depth. Yeah, yeah. No more yeah. depth. But we could do a part two, possibly. Obviously, possibly. Yeah. Yes, definitely. I would think so. We could actually come to the Belfast possibly one day for a part two, just to see how it all. That'll be lovely. Works. Yeah. Yeah. You film how it's all done. Yeah. 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 Certainly. So, uh, thank you, Hans. Uh, everybody, uh, check out Enix and Watches. Um, seriously, just go and check them out. There's a lot of lovely watches on there, and you've seen how thorough and how passionate that Hans is for his business, which is which is amazing and and very refreshing at a price point that you can afford to have this kind of level of quality of service because we've all bought from Hans, so we all know um, the, you know the customer care that he gives. And I think it's brilliant where he can take the the customer care of buying a Rolex for the money you can buy his watches for when you don't want or can't afford a Rolex. It's it's very refreshing yeah. and it's brilliant. Yeah. So I'll wrap this up, everybody. Uh, thanks all for watching and we will see you again next time. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Goodbye. Bye.